Hello, I'm Richard Lee. I'm a PhD student at the University of Washington, and today I will be presenting our work on a new sensing technique for gaze tracking. This work was a collaboration between the University of Washington, NVIDIA Research, and the University College London. In 2008, the United States National Academy of Engineering identified 14 grand challenges that will tremendously advance the quality of life of mankind. Among them is a challenge of taking virtual reality to the next level. As part of the challenge statement, a primary hurdle to solve is gaze tracking, which is required for many applications of VR. Indeed, many startups have since demonstrated their answers to this challenge. At the same time, large players such as Google and Oculus have also shown interest in this problem as well, developing their own solutions and acquiring relevant startups. Despite wide interest from so many players, gaze tracking still faces numerous issues before it can be widely deployed. As a result, we are motivated to develop the capabilities of case tracking in terms of accuracy, refresh rate, power consumption, signal processing, cost, and form factor. All of these factors are essential to move towards a practical and deployable gaze tracking system. Of course, we are not the first to be interested in this problem space. Previous solutions have largely used cameras for capturing images of the eye for gaze tracking. These systems, while generally effective, are often required not only the camera, but also a light source to maintain a robust signal in different lighting conditions. Processing entire images can also be very computationally expensive. We show one example of a wearable camera-based gaze tracking system commercially available from Pupil Labs. More closely related to our proposed work, single pixel detector systems use an array of single point optical sensors such as photodiodes. By using only photodiode receivers and LED emitters as an alternative to a full camera and light source, Lee et al. showed that it was possible to use small solar cells to harvest enough energy to power the entire gaze tracking system. In addition to developing sensing hardware and processing algorithms, also relevant to our work is the use of simulations as a way to under better understand the physical response of light on an eyeball. We adopt a similar framework to Invisible Eye for informing the design of our own system. Finally, while more distant from our work, for completeness, we also describe two non-optical sensing approaches for gaze tracking. On the left, we have scleral search coils, which use a coil embedded into a contact lens as a means of magnetic field sensing. On the right, we have electrooculography, which leverages the fact that the eyeballs are actually charged spheres, such that eye movements generate a voltage across the nose bridge allowing devices such as the Jin's meme to measure the voltage difference for estimating eye movement. First, I will introduce the concept of single pixel detection of gaze. Normally, camera-based gaze tracking systems obtain an image such as this. Computer vision algorithms then extract relevant landmarks for estimating gaze orientation. However, we hypothesize that not every pixel in that camera image is required to make that estimation. In this image, the image of the eye is subsampled to 1% of the number of pixels, yet general features such as the pupil and eyelid are still visible. Even when the image is subsampled by another half, the pupil remains clear. The primary advantage of such a sensing technique is that since fewer pixels are sensed, then fewer pixels need to be processed, reducing computational requirements, then overall less power is consumed, addressing one of our main motivations for this work. In addition, by using only the amount of pixels needed for inferring gaze orientation, we could also poten potentially remove the sensing of any biometric information, helping to preserve the privacy at the hardware level. Towards this end, we developed an initial prototype in which we simply placed photodiodes and LEDs directly in front of the eye. While functional, this first test was un unusable for any real application since it blocked the user's field of view. To mitigate the issue of visibility, we simply moved the electronics to the edge of the user's field of view in a ring form factor. However, the signals then became a lot less clear for inferring gaze orientation. A previous gaze tracking company suggested that placing the sensors underneath the eye would be sufficient. It is well known, after all, that human eyes have a tendency to be angled downward. However, we found that the signal was still not very clear, and we were inspired to do more foundational work instead. We took a detour from rapid physical prototyping and developed a simulation framework using the 3D model of an eyeball. We oriented the eye in every possible orientation, sampling light in the way a photodiode would, and discovered that human facial structures generally vary too much from person to person in real life for the simulations to be helpful for making concrete design decisions. However, we did develop three primary design recommendations to help guide future work. One, 
Maximize the variety and sensing perspective. 2. Minimize emitters so detectors don't saturate. Fi 3. Co-locate emitter and detector to maximize the signal. With these design recommendations in mind, we enhanced our system yet again, adding sensors to the left and right in addition to the bottom. We also included a camera and infrared hot mirror for deb debugging purposes. Finally, we arrived at the final design for NextGaze, featuring eight photodiodes for receivers and three LEDs for emitters. To minimize saturation, only one LED is on at a time, while its neighboring photodiodes take the measurement. Here, you can see the next, game, next gaze form factor and its operation in real time. The white dot is the target for the user to move their gaze to, and the green dot is the estimated gaze orientation. Using a multi-layer perceptron model, we were able to obtain an average error of 1.68 degrees and 400 Hz refresh rate while only consuming 16 milliwatts of power. Next, for reducing the number of components used, we leveraged a technique for duplexing LEDs such that they can be used for both emitting and receiving. In doing so, we developed the lead to gaze prototype, which round robins through the LEDs with one acting as a receiver while the remaining LEDs are used to make light measurements. This approach also increases the flexibility of sensing perspective, since a single point can act now act as both. At the same time, we also found that a simple Gaussian process regression model can be more effective than the previously used model, while also requiring less training data. This resulted in a slightly improved accuracy of 1.57 degrees. However, while both refresh rate and power consumption were compromised, we believe that improved engineering quality could improve both of these factors significantly. In conclusion, we have shown how the use of a simulation framework was used to inform the design of two functional prototypes, next gaze and lead to gaze. The latter is also, to the best of our knowledge, the first system to, to leverage the sensing capabilities of LEDs re, uh, for gaze tracking, reducing the requirement of an extra separate component for sensing as well. With respect to the initial motivating factors we presented at the beginning, we did not meet our expectation for accuracy. However, both systems did, did have sample rates of 250 hertz, and next gaze consumed less power than 50 milliwatts. In using the Gaussian process regression model for lead to gaze, we have offered a computationally lighter weight alternative to neural networks as a modeling technique. In addition, by using less components, cost can be saved. And finally, the use of discrete components allows for more flexibility in placement and topology, enabling more acceptable form factors. Thanks for your interest and listening to this talk. You can find a copy of the paper and these slides at the link above. I also look forward to any follow-up questions and comments that you may send me to the email address above. Thanks again.